Hi, everybody. Thank you so much for introduction, Max. Uh, so yeah, uh, I'm going to talk about something very specific, but something I sort of found, found interesting in the course of my career. Uh, and that's specifically CSS resets. Uh, a little bit of a backstory about why I thought it was interesting and important to talk about it. Uh, I've been uh, a software engineer consultant for basically most of my career. And that means I either have to fix someone else's code or start a project from scratch. And um, I've mostly been working in the web part of the application. So doing code with Angular, React, uh, a little bit of everything really, but uh, I find working with CSS on older project or starting CSS the right way on new project a specifically painful point when it comes to working on the project. And I try to do some research and try to develop some sort of working practices in my career. And that's sort of the conclusion I came to that uh, the more setup you do in the beginning of the project, and that includes not just CSS, but also bundlers, uh, hooks, you name them, the easier it is to start going very well on the project. So I will be talking about a very specific uh, type of a setup that you can do in the beginning of your project that uh, supposedly is going to help you greatly as you go. So um, yeah, full stack developer, work for Nitor, I'm on social media, yada, yada, yada. Let's get to the point. So I made this uh, design on Figma, very, very small, very, very, you know, nothing fancy really uh, of this landing page. Uh, and I decided to try to code it without any resets at all. So basically all of the native browser CSS was preserved. Um, this is what I got on the desktop version. As you can see, there is little discrepancies here and there, nothing major, but it's still not, you know, aligned perfectly. And then I tested it on mobile. Uh, a little bit more difference compared to the previous one. And then I tested some other views. There is, you know, more difference as you progress, especially with the forms. And um, yeah, as a developer, you want to reach the consistency. You want to know that the same elements are going to look plus minus the same in every single browser. Um, we've never had so much control and we've never had so little control at the same time because we do have control over the code base and the tools we're using but we have virtually no control over like the medium over which the user is going to see our website right so uh that's a very interesting question how to bypass that like restriction or solve this problem and like uh i sort of thought from the very beginning right like if you put something like this, if you put this type of an HTML into code sandbox or whatever, I mean, it's going to be rendered, right? And it's, I mean, there is a lot of logic behind it. There is a render tree that is formed. Uh, you put your HTML code, smash it together with your CSS, you get this nice render tree that the browser ends up painting. Um, I mean, the CSS has to come from somewhere. Otherwise, you're going to see pretty much a blank page, right? Uh, so this is the question, like, where does it come from? And pretty much everybody knows it's the user agent that pulls the uh, specific CSS style sheet that's native to your browser engine. And I mean, they have the discrepancies. And I think in the past, there used to be even more but now they're sort of trying to align together but not quite as well and yeah the question is how do you solve this and there there has been a pool i think on css tricks about what kind of resets people have been using i think it's already a very good start that, that almost 30 percent have been using css resets and that is i think statistics for 2015 so maybe it has shifted, maybe more people have started using it, but there is still a big percentage that doesn't really know what that is. I mean, 26%. There is also people who are not really sure what sort of reset they're using because they're using third party frameworks such as Bootstrap. So this is something I would like to talk about. And 
usually if I'm talking about, you know, setting up the reset, that's usually what happens in the team. People just Google reset CSS. They stumble upon the first Google query they see and they just copy paste it and just, you know, I'm a software engineer, I'm a consultant. I have very little time on my hands. I, I just want to copy paste stuff and just move forward. I don't want to think about it. And that's, I mean, that's a valid perspective, but the more you do it, the more problem you actually ended up having. And I'm going to explain why. So now actually Eric Mayer himself, who created the first version of CSS Reset in what I think was 2004, like, he actually doesn't like it himself that people don't really modify it. And there is a very good reason behind it. Like what, what he created worked for his project and it's not necessarily gonna work for someone else's use case. Um, it should be tweaked. It should be adapted to your needs. You should sort of form the clean slate that's gonna work for everybody on the team and decide what it's gonna be. Depending on, of course, of how ambitious of a design you wanna make. So if you think about designs that are presented with a lot of animations, sort of designs like of the website that you see on awards websites, right? I'm pretty sure they're doing the hard reset. They're pretty much resetting everything and then just putting the things on top of it. If you're just doing some sort of very basic information page, you might think about something else. It might not be as much of an importance to you. So hopefully by the end of this talk, you will have more clear vision of what sort of resets you want to use and what kind of needs they're going to satisfy. Um, the spoiler is all of them are someone's opinions. There is no right way to do it. It's all about what works for your project. So yeah, take it with the grain of salt, everything that I say. Uh, the most popular one, and I, I'm going to go in order of the size of the reset. So this is the most basic one, right? The, the, the most basic one is the universal selector reset. And there is usually two versions. There is the first one, which is just resetting margin and paddings. And there is the second one. Um, who can tell me what's wrong with the second one? I'm wondering if someone has noticed. <laughs> Are you resetting the outline? Yeah, that's that's pretty much correct. Like one of the biggest problems of copy pasting is to end up resetting things you shouldn't do. So that's a very good question. Thank you. Uh, sorry, answer. My English is not good, as you can see. Anyways, uh, let's move on to the second one. I've actually done some research and I tried to find also the OG one that people used to have on the project. And I do HTML is one of those. It's slightly fancier than the first version, but still not too much of a reset. So you have some, a lot of room to maneuver around it. Um, and then there is option three. And if you want to have like a very, very, very small reset, but still sort of start with a clean slate, I would personally recommend this one. It's, well, yeah, mini reset CSS, very, very basic, but very good for a start on a small project. Then we have, in order of how big the file is, of course, Eric Mayer's reset. And uh, what you should understand is that it's hugely outdated. It's one of those very old resets that has all of this old tags that people really don't use anymore. So, I mean, should you copy paste it? Maybe is it going to be the best option for you? Probably not. Um, then we have HTML5 Doctor CSS reset, which is pretty much a built on top of an Eric Mayer's reset, but you know, with everything done right. And yeah, it's it's a bit bigger, but it also solves some problems that they managed to find on the way in different browsers. If you look at the diff between those two, I mean, it's pretty clear that they are just, you know, an improved version of the previous version uh, and some addition to them. So the next reset I probably would recommend after the mini reset would be the HTML5 doctor reset from this. Uh, I found out that there has been a Yahoo reset CSS at some point created. 
I'm not sure how wild, widely this has been used, like in Europe at least. I know that there have been some projects using this in America, but I don't think it gained much traction. It's still, you know, an honorable mention. It was a thing at some point. So just making sure you understand this. Uh, this one has been quite interesting. One of the biggest problems uh, with the resets that I've found is that sometimes the resets have important tags and that's something you want to avoid completely. If you have an important tag inside of your reset CSS, you're basically not allowing any anything on top of it that's that's just that's just a no no that's not something you should have in there uh the next question and it it turned out to be a huge topic of discussion and almost like a battle between like two types of developers the one who thinks they should reset and the ones who think they should normalize <laughs> but but the thing is uh normalization or normalized css it's pretty much a version of a reset it's the same type of a reset from the you know original browser settings. It just it's just different values, and this is my attempt to demonstrate it um, for you right now. So let's try this. This is a browser default. This is the mayor reset, and this is the normalize. So mayor reset, normalize, right? Uh, May reset is about finding that baseline, that minimum values that you can have. And normalize is about distributing the same values over different browsers. So the idea is it's pretty much the same. It's just implemented slightly, slightly differently from, well, normalize and reset. That, that's really it. So whoever is trying inside of your team to say, hey, you should be using normalize, not reset, well, now you have a pretty good argument to ask why at least um so yeah i mean it, it was very popular and there is a reason why if you're just using normalized css you're pretty much set and you don't really have to do much work in terms of uh making sure your text is properly formatted making sure your elements are gonna look the same across browsers and if this is what you need you should go for it definitely um, another one, uh, well, this is just an example of the normalized CSS. We, of course, are not going to go through the code in here. But yeah, um, another one is a sanitized CSS. And as you're quickly going to discover, a lot of them are just a build on top of each other. So normalized CSS, uh, so sorry, so sanitized CSS took normalized CSS and added a few styles. So it's, it's, yeah, it's pretty much just the build on top. And yeah, this is the diff between the two. You have, I think, normalized to the left and sanitized to the right. Uh, then there is a reboot CSS. Uh, and if you're using Bootstrap, you probably are using reboot CSS as your reset file. So that's, again, it's a build. So, so if normalized is, the, the grandfather sanitize is the father then reboot is the child basically ju they're just building on top of each other and you know making your reset bigger and smarter and fixing a lot of things that are wrong from their perspective in the browser an interesting one is a d style so they've asked a question what if we combine the fixes from the normalization files and also reset it that's pretty much it that's the d style this style is going to look like this whereas normalized and numeric reset is going to look like this it's just basically defaults to zeros no colors no underline nothing i personally am a fan of d style for a reason that it's easier for me to write styles from the very 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 scratch than to like think about oh is it going to you know, be the same size in that browser or whatnot. But again, to each their own. Uh, option number 13, this is an interesting one because it's not really used much, but it's gaining a lot of traction, which is a CSS remedy. What I would do probably would encourage people to visit it more and contribute to the CSS remedy because it's, it's an interesting project. They're really trying to create one user agent style sheet for every browser. 
essentially, and making sure that we don't have to deal with this problem from the very beginning, which is a good idea from my perspective. So what are we going to do with it now that we know that that is the case, right? Like, how are we going to deal with this question of like, how can we apply the knowledge? Well, the first thing first, we need to start using resets in the projects from the very beginning. A lot of times that I have been coming to the project, I've realized that uh, there is a lot of bugs. There is all of those little discrepancies that could have been easily solved by just having the clean slate to start with. Um, I've been trying a lot of custom, I've been trying to write my own custom reset. Uh, I guess a lot of people in my shoes who have discovered that diversity are trying to write their own version, which is also a great thing to do, but you need to think about, you know, what, what are you writing it for in the very beginning? Uh, and maybe you should check out the reset style sheet that you have imported because actually most of those like normalized, sanitized, reboot, they have amazing documentation. Pretty much every line has a comment as to why it's there, what it does, which browser fix it makes. So I'd recommend reading it there and seeing. Anyways, um, I've done a little demo in here uh, where I basically wrote my own reset, if it's going to work, for the text. And I'm going to explain as a conclusion of it what I have done wrong. This was my sort of first attempt to write my own reset. And I'll go and explain what I've done wrong and what I would do differently nowadays. Uh, if you want to make sure that none of your image tags ever show on the web page, do this. That's like the best way to be very confused for a long time and think like, oh my, what did I do? Like, like you really want to think before you write a reset, like what exactly are the properties that you're including there? So that should go like out of, you know, the door, but for the, but this is actually very valid. If you don't want any empty paragraphs or any empty text to be there, that would probably be a very good decision for you. Um, I guess one of the biggest pain points for me, at least when doing uh, like website moderation would be making sure that the font looks right. And this is where this type of properties come in because then you don't really have this weird effect from the Chrome that, you know, makes your font way bolder. You don't really have those weird things where the text overflows in the wrong direction. Most of the people are doing websites that support, you know, Latin or German based languages. So you're going to have reading from left to right anyway. So you might as well just set it to the correct um, setting in the very beginning. Uh, this P width uh, actually came from one research that I've been reading about how wide the text should be. And if we calculate the font size, and if we calculate um, the line height, then the idea width is going to be 33 EM basically. So this was the first sort of my try out in writing my own custom reset, just, you know, just to satisfy my demands for the font to look right. But yeah, uh, that's just really it. There is not really anything more to it. Uh, I guess if you want to take something out of it, just you know, start exploring and seeing what sort of resets you would like to use on this project and which not. And thank you so much. What a great talk. Everybody's clapping. If you have any questions for Margarita, put them in the chat. Um, we have a chat module that you can open at the bottom of the screen. The first question I have is, is that demo with all the different resets online somewhere? Can we get access uh, to that? Not yet, but I, can, but I can put it online. That would be amazing because that looked amazing. When you click through all the different resets, that looked really cool to figure out what they actually do. I would love to get access to that. Uh, it's, it's actually not written by me. I think I found it online like as a demonstration. That, I that's, this is really cool. This this should be you know out there so that people can see what it actually does. 
That's totally fair. Yeah, but definitely. Nice. I think Any... just one thing I would like to add in here is that if you're going to include it, you should really include it in the beginning. If the project has been going on for a few months, it's it's really too late already because then if you include the reset read reactively, you're just going to break most of your styles. That so makes that's sort of sense. like a warning. So which one do you use on your projects right now? A custom one or do you use D-Style or a I mixture use, of different ones? I uh, use a mixture of Sanitize with HTML5 Doctor on top with my own text reset on top of it. So it's three. Nice. Just to be very sure. <laughs> nice. But yeah, I mean, I've done some really stupid mistakes trying to get that thing right. And I'm just, you know, warning you that you should try it out, but be aware of this is a very specific thing when you globalize your styles. Yeah, that makes total sense. Since I'm not seeing any questions in chat, apparently you did a great job with your talk.